All right, welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show, guys. So this is the part two version of uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. And so what you're looking at in front of you is the balance sheet. So this is where we're going to start. You can go check out part one where pretty much we looked at it from a bird's eye view. And now we're delving a little bit deeper into the numbers. So uh, I decided to split it off because I had to actually, uh, you know, I couldn't film. I didn't have enough time to film the entire video all at once. So you're seeing this after the fact. So this is being filmed a couple hours after the first one. Uh, a little bit unprecedented for Capital Mindset, but these are unprecedented times. Times. So uh, let me actually go over some of these key points with you. So in part one, we did some review. We looked at the uh, earnings call presentation. So the presentation is a sales pitch. Now looking at, again, some of these financials or financial statements, we have the 10Q right in front of us. So this is the quarterly statement. Everything here is up to date. Remember that the balance sheet is a point in time. So uh, the most recent uh, report is going to be the most up to date version. Now we're looking at the income statement right in front of us. Okay. But we'll get to the balance sheet in just a second. Because remember, the balance sheet is the point in time. This is only showing for the quarter. So for the three months ending, we have the different distributions of the, that revenue, advertising distribution, content, and other. Now we go to some of the other portions. I'm going to show you some restructuring and other charges, one point, about a billion dollars. Just remember this number when we go into the statement of cash flow. So if we go to the statement of cash flows in part one, we talked about why that is a big deal for this company. Why do they need a ton of cash flow? Well, to pay down debt, of course. So I have cash provided by operating activities at $1.334 billion dollars okay so why is this important well we we doesn't look like much right so we do see that six months ended a year ago it's about 1.1 billion dollars and i'll actually talk about this creator here so that i have to point this out because this creator is a much larger creator and so they have a definitely a far bigger impact on what people think so this is kind of to highlight why surface level analysis surface level research can be quite harmful at times so uh we're gonna see it uh, and again this is hopefully constructive criticism at the very least but we're gonna look at the, this creator here and we're gonna pull it up uh what he says a loss on content and merger costs and Zaslav here, he was the guy that was supposed to make this business great. And so far, what he's done on this most recent earnings call is blame the previous management and the previous estimates. He threw all of the blame onto everyone else and what they did mm -hmm. before him. All their total revenue all right, decreased by 1% taking out foreign exchange. So they had a revenue okay, decline. He's just, he's the really net highlights. loss available to Warner Brothers Discovery was 3418 billion yep three billion four hundred and eighteen million dollars of a net loss that includes a two billion dollar amortization of intangibles a one billion dollar restructuring and other charges and 983 million of transaction and integration expenses lots of expenses added in a single quarter causing this company to have a massive net loss to give this a visual of how bad this actually looks we can take a look at this on the chart here. If I pull this up, just take a look at how bad this loss is this quarter. Okay, three point so four billion income, dollars of net gap net income. Yeah, sure. What? Why not? We'll we'll pay attention to that, I guess. But um, so with gap net income, it's showing a bunch of uh, restructuring charges, et cetera, that I don't think he was paying attention to, or maybe he didn't understand what exactly they were. But there's some other parts where it gets really interesting. So I'll go over here. Uh, cash provided operating activities. activities increased to one billion, and reported free cash flow increased to. 789 million. So they're saying, look, we have free cash flow, 789 million. And the impression this type of writing leaves to investors is that they're highly free cash flow productive. And that's not really the case. Because when you're looking at free cash flow, you have to consider what is creating those free cash flows. Is it actual money being taken in from the company or uh -huh. is it just dilution? And the problem with saying that they made all of this free cash flow last quarter is it doesn't incorporate the amount of shares outstanding. The shares outstanding went from, in 2021, 589 million to 2.286 billion. So they 4X the amount of shares outstanding. All right, egg on your face there, but. This is where the free cash flow came from. We can even mm -hmm. see this more clear on Qualtrum. For example, if we pull up the shares outstanding graph, you can see the dramatic increase in shares, it going up by roughly four times the amount. And then if we pull up the free cash flow graph here, this is what they're saying they're doing so great. Look, everyone, we made a lot of free cash flow last quarter. It's right there in line with pre cash is much lower than previous okay, quarters. So... It was a decline from the most recent quarter and comparative to the history of the company, 
it's nothing spectacular. So that's the biggest problem I see. This company's facing cash flow problems. And in the meantime, the X has, take a look at Warner Brothers. All right, so basically from here, what I'm gonna kind of tell you guys is if we go over here, I'll just I'll just tell you straight up. So his his software or him himself couldn't didn't wanna do the further research and digging into the past. And um, so, the company didn't issue a bunch of shares. It's from the restructuring, okay? Um, so if you actually see or look at older filings, you'll notice that the Discovery had about 500 -ish shares and now the two something billion is the new company. So that's not really true that we see all that share dilution. He mentioned that the only reason why they're cash flow positive is, is because of that share dilution, which what he's referring to in normie speak is the reconciliation that occurs in the statement of cash flows when we re-add uh, you know, non-cash expenses, something like stock-based compensation expense, which we don't see here for some reason. I don't know why we don't see it here. Well, that's because that's not what happened at all. Uh, we didn't see that happen. Therefore, we're not going to see that reconciliation. So we are going to see some things that are one-time expenses that are going to be removed from the net income portion. And so one of them is the restructuring, the transactions, which I think totals to about $1 billion for the restructuring and the integration fee will be about you know another billion so that actually turns out to be uh, cash flows up to the tune of about uh, another two billion dollars okay so about oh, just above three billion dollars maybe some of that's you know you think is here to stay let's be concerned let's say two billion dollars at the very least uh, because those are one-time expenses and that's for the uh, six months ended okay so then for the total year you let's say you know just to make it simple, double that. And that's about what it's producing a year in cash flows. Okay, so uh, that's some, you know, little nuances there that I wanted to share with you guys regarding what someone else is saying and where they're technically wrong or very largely wrong and why today that's uh, uh, important and why your analysis will be very far off if you go off of that. So if we go over to the balance sheet, of course, we talked about it in part one, how the debt is a big problem. We see that non-current portion of debt. We broke down uh, when everything is due. So, okay, you can check out part one for that part. And uh, we see on the assets portion, uh, we do see a, a ton of goodwill, but not so much that it's the vast majority of the uh, balance sheets, so that's fine. Intangible assets is the vast majority of the value. Now, intangible assets comes from that branding content that Discovery didn't have before, so everything basically blew up as it's a new company. So if you notice, everything's bigger. For example, they're spending more on depreciation. Well, why is that? Well, it's off of a bigger base. Everything's off of a bigger base, so it kind of makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Now, we are seeing the cash actually draw down a bit, so one of the concerns that analysts are having with the merger itself or the debt repay down is currently a lot of it was paid off using cash on hand, not from cash flows. And we talked about that in part one. If cash flows are suppressed, that's going to suppress the company's ability to pay down that debt. And if they can't pay down that debt, that's basically where the story is, guys. So this company needs to restructure itself. Uh, it needs to pay down that debt. That debt is the primary risk. If it resolves that risk, you know, we're all well and good. So again, this video is to be watched in tandem with part one. I know it's unorthodox for this channel. I separated it into two parts simply because I had to take a, um, a quick break and I uploaded part one video and then I didn't know if I was going to have part two up today or tomorrow. You know, it turns out it's going to be uploaded today at the same time along with part one. So there's just going to be two separate videos. Um, I don't like to do that, but you know, it's going to be kind of wonky seeing that. But anyways, so just look forward for that. So going forward into the future, a lot of these one-time expenses, they're not going to show up. The company's going to, you know, do better. <laughs> and uh, uh, if they're able to fix that debt problem, we could see some good performance from the company, okay? But that's primary risk. So for me, I'm, I'm happy that I have Netflix as my primary player. And then, you know, as far as building Warner Bros. Discovery into a position to actually meet uh, that same, uh, let's say, role, I don't see it at the present moment in time. But it's not that it won't ever be or won't be. I'm, I'm, like I said, in part one, I'm going to be nibbling. I go over the evaluation back and we can actually take a look at some more stuff because I have some more time. So if we go over some of these ratios, the problem with looking at these ratios is it's reflecting the the change or not, sorry, not reflecting the change in the more recent years. It's still only on focusing on that uh, um, Discovery versus Warner Brothers Discovery, now the new company. So, but, you know, the, the analysis was actually going off of, you know, it did actually update and make sure, you know, we made the changes for the new share count. So that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.